is a jar of sand. Well, technically it's sand and glitter. Now I keep this jar of sand and glitter on my desk. Do you want to know why? Well, before I tell you the answer, I need to ask you a question. If I were to grab a handful of glitter and sand, do you think that you could count each and every grain of sand and glitter in my hand? Think about it. Every single grain of sand and glitter. I think it would be impossible to do even just this handful because there are millions of grains of sand just in my hand. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about all the sand over the entire earth. The sand at the beach that we make sand castles with, or the sand in the desert that you can ride in those sand dunes with, or even the sand we can't see, like the sand that's at the deepest part of the ocean, or the sand that's in the deepest part of the earth. See, some of the sand we can't even see. You're probably wondering, why are we talking about sand and why do you keep a jar of sand on your desk? Well, here's the answer. In Psalm 139, it says that he thinks about us so much that his thoughts outnumber the grains of sand on the earth. Let me tell you that one more time. His thoughts for us outnumber the grains of sand that are on the entire earth, which means he thinks about us infinitely. He thinks about us so much that we could never, ever count his thoughts for us. So when you feel maybe unseen or unheard or unloved or you're having a bad day, think about it. God thinks about you infinitely. Now this makes me think of our story of Joseph, right? Joseph found himself in a lot of really tough situations. For one, his brothers sold him into slavery. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. His brothers sold him to be a slave in another, in another country. Then he was falsely accused of a crime and put in prison. I don't know about you, but I think it'd be really easy to get down and to, to wonder what's going on and to be really confused. But here's what Joseph did. It says in the Bible that he kept going, that he kept just being who God made him to be. And it says that God was with him. God was with him when he was sold into slavery. God was with him when he was in prison and left there. And God was with him when he then became second in command to Pharaoh, like the king, Pharaoh, the king. He became second in command and helped to save a whole nation, even his family that had sold him into slavery. So here's what we can think about. When we're in a time where it's confusing and we don't understand quite what the plan is, we can know that God is in control of everything. And God can use even situations that seem bad, like in Joseph's life, for good. God is in control of everything. So next time you're having a tough day, I want you to do this. I want you to find sand, whether that's at the playground or at the beach, and I want you to hold it in your hand and think about how God's thoughts for you outnumber the grains of sand on the entire earth.